Well, to join us now on the latest developments as we take one more look at Wellington Street in front of Parliament Hill, again secured by police after yesterday's police actions. I want to bring in Michael Campa, an associate professor of criminology at the University of Ottawa. We've had him on for these past several weekends. So, Michael, good to see you again. Listen, uh, let's begin in the nation's capital. Describe for us what phase of the operation we're now in. Parliament Hill is secured. Police uh, have set up uh, gates as well as uh, positions where they are not allowing people to make their way, way back up to the parliamentary precinct. So where are we now in terms of the operation? So it's clear that the police have very effectively cleared most of the city, apart from a little bit of mop up of people who remain, who are still in town. The phase we're at now is that the police are prepared for what I'd call echo protest. You have to think about the protests in Ottawa as being like an epicenter. They set off a huge amount of energy right across the country, inspiring protests ongoing across the country. But that's been cleared out. But as Judy was just saying, it hasn't been eliminated. It's bouncing around. People are regrouping and reorganizing and trying to determine where they might be able to bring protest back to reestablish their aims of causing disruption and harm to the Canadian state and economy. So the police now are setting up to prevent any reverberations of echoes of protests that might roll back into town once they get a toehold, get reestablished, reconcentrate their energy and perhaps try to come back. So what does that mean then? Uh, maintaining the security zone or around the downtown core of Ottawa, uh, does that mean an operation of weeks, months? What are we looking at here? A lot will depend on what we see on the vote on the Emergencies Act on Monday. If that act carries on uh, with, a, with a positive vote in Parliament, we'll have at least 30 days where we can maintain the specific rules about not protesting in the parliamentary precinct or blocking things like critical infrastructure and the major 400 series highways and so forth and so on. And that will mean you will see a quite significantly increased police presence in the Ottawa region especially, on account of the fact that we'd be able to maintain police officers from other regions here for a longer period of time under the Emergencies Act. Well, it's interesting. You, you, you referenced the Emergencies Act. As you well know, right now, Parliament is debating its merits. There will be a vote tomorrow night. And already uh, we are hearing about core challenges, not only from uh, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, but now the Alberta government in terms of Jason Kenney is going to table uh, something in, in the legislature to challenge the Emergencies Act being invoked by the federal government. What do you make about this pushback against the act? Was the act needed? Is it still needed in this country? Well, I have no doubt that the act was needed on my reading of the content of the act and the situation. The act matches the needs of the situation. I do, however, think there is a role. I welcome legal challenge of the government's decision to mobilize the Emergencies Act for the reason that it is the first time we have ever used this act and through court challenge, we tend to get a lot more clarity. It hammers on government's decision and sort of chips away maybe parts of the decision that were not so wise, certain of the clauses that may have been less necessary than others. In other words, through court challenge, we tend to refine how we're ever going to do this again in the future. So I personally don't agree with the position of the Civil Liberties Association, for example, but I think that their action is very useful because it's through challenge that we improve how we'd ever use this thing again, the Emergencies Act, in the future. In the meantime, there there are some questions left over, and I do want to begin here with the protest organizers themselves. Talk to us about the security concerns that remain around the groups that helped organize this protest. Well, we've been saying for weeks now, these streams of organizers, there are persons who, Tamara Leach has connections to the Maverick Party, obviously, the separatist Western Party. Uh, she, this is not a group that's committed to violence, obviously. This is a, uh, what some people would call a non-mainstream political party, but with no ties to actual criminality. There are elements beyond Tamara Leach and perhaps others that we've been seeing in the media that are tied we've, to the weapons that have been recovered in Coots to people who have a plan to use violence to destabilize the state. We call these people accelerationists. 
Accelerationists believe that if they can spark a little bit of civil violence, push the state with a little violence to get a violent response out of the state, that they will bring about the civil war that they ultimately think is necessary. That's why they're called accelerationists. They want to uh, speed this process up. These are the agencies that the RCMP and CSIS will be aggressively pursuing over the course of the next weeks and months. I have less than a minute, but the, the other uh, remaining questions has to do around the Ottawa police because of my read of what's been put forward with this Emergencies Act is the fact it's being invoked because the regular channels had failed. So what are the questions that now need to be answered and examined regarding the actions with the Ottawa police? Well, the situation in Ottawa is uh, all the problems that we are going to find in Ottawa policing, I will just tell Canadians, they are typical of problems of policing and policing organization right across the country. We just really noticed at the moment, given the emergency around us that brought all of these issues to the fore. It's got to do with making sure that there's adequate planning and resources in place for the outlier situations. We have to be prepared for the fact that there will be political protest in this country for many years to come, some of it very honorable and some less so. Police services boards have to figure out what their role is. They've been told many times with inquiry after inquiry, and it's very difficult for them to accept all of their powers, but we need improvement there. We need to get clear on jurisdictional issues between municipalities, province, and the federal government on these issues. It's very complicated to untangle, but I have no doubt if we use this emergency as an opportunity to highlight where it broke down, we will succeed. Michael Kempa, always good to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you kindly.